Finally tonight, Ruthie Zell continues our coverage of a story that seems to be getting more and more complicated. The mortgage foreclosure problems have no simple solution because the story varies from person to person, even from place to place. I just want to know what I'm it's going to happen now to save me from my lagoon. Jim Yates of Peevely is worried about the future of his home, but for reasons indirectly related to the mortgage crisis. One of the inspectors left a card. Right. Yates is a former iron worker and single father who struggled to make ends meet since the 2002 auto accident left him with short-term memory loss, difficulty speaking, and limited use of his right side. Over the years, I've been refinancing. I would stay within a budget, but then other things that come up over the years. like The most serious thing to come up is a notice Yates recently received from the county. If he doesn't make costly repairs to his septic system, his house will be declared a public nuisance and condemned. Yates came here to the Economic Development Corporation of Jefferson County, which once gave him a special loan to replace the windows and heating and cooling system in his house. He hopes the EDC can work with him again to fix the septic system. That is probably one of Jefferson County's most prominent problems at the moment. And it is pro I would say that it is the number one cause for a lot of our homeowners for losing their homes. Rosie Buchanan is the EDC's assistant executive director. We have in excess that we know of probably 30,000 failing septic systems in this county. Um, our program was created where we can go in, we replace these systems. The problem falls in that these homes that are failing, um, when they are cited by the county, they have 10 days in order to take action um, to try to alleviate this. An average septic system runs about $20,000. When you're looking at a low-income person who is 30, 60 days behind in their house payment, they have no equity left, it's impossible to come up with $20,000. As a result, if this system is not replaced, they're going to lose the home because of failing infrastructure. Foreclosures in Jefferson County for the year 2005 totaled 674. The following two years, those numbers rose as homeowners in the St. Louis region and across the country defaulted on mortgage payments. From January through July of 2008, there were 571 foreclosures. Compared to some of its neighboring counties, Jefferson County appears to be weathering the mortgage crisis relatively well. On the Area the banker board. Rick Francis and realtor Jim Siebert are Economic Development Corporation board members. Our foreclosure rate is actually much smaller than most other areas is. You know, we've only got one bad pocket in the entire county, uh, and that's not nearly as bad as anybody else's anywhere else in the, in the region. And I think the key is the customers, uh, if they start seeing problems or we see problems with our customers, we start being proactive and uh, as the first sign of something going wrong is you see them show up on a past due report and uh, we try to be proactive and say, hey, is there a problem? A breakdown of 2008 foreclosure statistics by month suggests the tide might be turning. For the first half of the year, with the exception of February, foreclosures ranged in the 80s and 90s. Then in July, they dropped to 60. The question is whether the employment picture might push foreclosures back up. Take Chrysler Corporation, for example. The automaker recently announced it will close its minivan assembly plant here in Fenton and eliminate 2,400 hourly jobs within the next few months. Now, while the facility is located in St. Louis County, one-third of its workers live in Jefferson County. The auto workers, through the uh, union agreements that they have with the Chrysler Corporation, probably won't face the, uh, the, 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 the same kinds of problems that other individuals do when they lose their job. When a plant closes, they're immediately thrown out on the street. Uh, auto workers have a, a built-in safety net. And a safety net is exactly what Jim Yates got, is looking for. Got to, everyone got to feel that they could still make it better. 
Yeah, you might need that helping hand, but you can make it better.